Side Phil, the man, the myth, the fap legend. Oh, the camera's on. The camera's been on the whole time, huh? I don't even know. Hello. This dude is the wildest of animals. This just might be the slowest day I've had. I don't even have a thousand bits yet cheered. I don't even have $10 tip. Like, this is horrible. So I'm actually glad we're near the end of the game. This just really sucks because I really need the help right now with tips in particular. And this is the slowest stream I've seen in a million years. It's over. We are screwed. Isn't it refreshing that you're going to be on this marathon stream today and someone is not going to constantly be trying to find you to spend money? Isn't that good? I like that. 12 seconds later. It's, a, it's for a $100 or more tip, it's one shot. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I received a legitimate $125 tip. So I got to do about halfway for a shot. Isn't it refreshing that you're going to be on this marathon stream today and someone is not going to constantly be trying to get you to spend money? This video is sponsored by Raycon. Sleek, stylish, the look, the feel, the vibe. It's a lifestyle and they come in colors to match your aesthetic. Hey, by the way, sounds better than ever. And don't get me started on those gel tips that don't hurt your ears after prolonged use. They also offer 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. Raycons are priced on the right side of affordable, while other earbuds can cost you as much as $300. Raycons everyday earbuds have over 50,000 five-star reviews. They also feature three customizable sound profiles. Earbud tapping functions, noise isolation, and awareness mode. You have no idea how useful this is when walking into a building while trying to take off your motorcycle helmet with music blaring. Now, as soon as someone starts talking, you can unfortunately hear them. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash it's a Gundam to get 15% off your Raycons today. Okay, I did. A sh that's an actual shot. This is a double, this is a double shot glass. That's an actual shot. I took one shot, okay? Now, if I would, here's what I would recommend. If you want to do two shots, do two $100 tips. If you want two shots, that way it's separated. It's, you know, don't do, oh, I did $200 tip and I want two shots. Just do two $100 tips. Not a bad deal if I say so myself. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. Yeah, I hear some of you out there going, but Boogie2988 went bankrupt with Bitcoin. <laughs> so what? We don't know if Cat left Darkseid Phil. And to avoid scrutiny, he's paying a young boy to wear a wig and be seen out with him in public in a car, posing as Cat. This is just my theory, but the photo seems pretty damning. Bro, I'm telling you, DSP, for many of us, is like a Discovery Channel reality TV show drama. Women have 90 day fiance in my 600 pound life. I have dark sea death hill. So what's been up with Philbert since my last video? Well, DSP went into a begging black hole, the likes of which you've never seen. This dude was sending out emergency tweets telling fans to support him by coming to his stream and giving him money. That's what support is. Don't just watch, you fool. Things are rough right now. Phil only has $5 on the chat board. If you guys could come in and support, I'd really appreciate it. It's a slow night, you guys. DSP talks like a deli butcher on 6th Avenue from the 1970s. It's a slow night here at Nunzio's. Nobody's buying my baked ziti. So basically, this has been going on for a while. There's a lot of begging segments. He's needing money. Please, you guys, if you could help. Oh, there was the time when DSP was like, he needed money. So 
he could go out on his day off with his wife and have a nice day and buy a nice meal. Today and tomorrow is the money that I have for Monday. Okay, for my day off. So, please, if you can, please tip. And the goals tonight are, as usual, at $50, gunner glasses. At $100, these come off because this goes on. The real-life Dumas hat. We did hit the goal earlier today, which I was very appreciative of. Uh, it would be great if we could do it again tonight and see the real-life Dumas hat in effect. Okay? Um, and we hit the full goal tonight of 150. I'll put on the platinum vest. It'll look like I'm wearing a suit of armor along with the Dumas hat. Okay? So that's what we're doing. And uh, Mythical says, what do you need money for on Monday? Gee, what do you think, Mythical? Oh, uh, let's see. Grocery shopping, having one meal out a week with my wife. Um, uh, pet stuff this week, where actually last week there was like nothing. This week there's pet stuff I need to get. <laughs> money, please. Oh, no, no, there's no money. Oh. <sighs> money, please. Money, please. Dark Side Phil, if you're a fan of this guy, it's like having a kid. But you gotta give him allowance every day, two times a day. It's expensive to be a Dark Side Phil fan. I'd rather support Pokemon. She's a cheaper date. Legislation that holds people accountable for the actions that they do online. So Gundam took me a dollar, said big thank you for the good work. Oh, look what I can do online. <laughs> I'm a mature adult with a business degree. That's 100% a lot. You Phil, it's been tough. You know, my life has been tough. Oh. I'm good at lying. I agree with you. Why am I toxic? I have nothing to get rid of the toxicity. I'm a thief. I'm a scammer. I'm a liar. Let me keep going. Show me the money. Oh. Save the pig. Whining, complaining. <laughs> I need that money. I really do. I need that money. I did absolutely nothing wrong. I'm kicked out of the Twitch partner program. Holy shit. That is an epic <laughs> intro, dude. I did nothing wrong. Do my end, but not look like I really love to. Well, anyway, one day Moist Critical got a load of DSP and talked about him for five seconds. And oh my god, the five seconds of Moist Critical did more damage to Dark Side Phil than my two hour videos. I should elaborate further on the boogie drama for those who don't know and probably don't care. From what I understand, McJuggernuggets allegedly gave the Boogsters some bad advice. Unfortunately for Boogie, he wasn't my friend. I would have helped him out. I would have said, Boogie, leave the crypto alone. You don't know what you're doing. And for God's sake, stop it with the sugar babies. All right, guys. I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm frustrated for two reasons. Reason number one, because, yeah, the game does suck. Um, I really did not like tonight's stream. And in addition to that, as you guys can see, I stayed extra late for you guys. And basically, it amounted to nothing. Um, no one's really supported, which pisses me off. It God does. Damn. Yeah, I'm playing a game. Obviously, it's frustrating. A lot of people showed up to watch it because you saw how frustrating it was. And no one supported it. Yeah, that does upset me. Oh, no. It's an Aqua Teal video that Voice Critical was watching. The absolute worst possible scenario for Philbert. Okay. It would have been one thing if I'm staying late and people are laughing and having a good time. And a few people are at least supporting the stream. But no one did. And that really upsets me. Um... I'm going to hope that tomorrow when I finish it, uh, there will be some support. Because it is pissing me off that I just stayed extra late and I got nothing for it. You know, the game's not even good. Yeah, he just goes full you mask know, off. For me, I Bro, the mask was never on. Our channel, The King of Hate HD, and click on the ads that show up on the videos there. Because hopefully, you know, fingers crossed, that actually starts giving me some, some money back. <laughs> for the rest of us, it's like, this is DSP on the Dizaily. That's what I love about him. He's a wild animal. <laughs> Moist doesn't even know. Dark side Phil charged two grand for his fantasy a cat. Let's Quack. go. Team tipped a dollar. He said, well, $1,000 cat DLC. Well, it's not a DLC, but it certainly is some you know information you guys had no idea about and something that I wanted to share with all of you. Then goes on to say, like, he doesn't even know if he'll be able to afford Gotham Knights on Friday because no one has donated enough and he's not sure if they'll donate enough tomorrow. But that's his whole brand now. People watch DSP for, like, the shit show of it. Like, if you type in Dark Side Phil, for example, like, I, I'm going to test this. I, I, I'm not logged in on my main account here, so I guess we'll see. Yeah, his channel is the fourth thing there. 
I still think DSP's biggest contribution to all of the internet is when he jerked off on stream, though. That is actually iconic. He not only jerked off, he blew a load and then immediately just started streaming. It was so f- it, it, That was like an actual top G maneuver, unironically. I gotta go so hard for that. I don't even know what to call the jerk off segment. It was definitely one of the top 10 moments of YouTube history. Bro, he didn't even pick up his pants, dude. <laughs> like, you know, Phil is like leaning back and forth. But his dick flopping around, playing it cool. He's like, oh, the camera's from the neck down. Nobody can see this. If, if I make movements like I'm pulling up my pants, they'll know for sure. He was playing 4D chess that day. So anyway, the moist one talks about Phil and of course, the piglets get back to the Adolf Snortler. Let's go with that. On October 10th, 2022. Moist Critical mentioned me in a latest video. This Mario level took seven years to beat. Okay, I'm sure it's got to be a negative meme about me then because I can't imagine how I apply to a Mario level that took seven years to beat. I have no idea. Well, of course it'd be negative, Phil. You haven't done anything positive to be real. Like, what has DSP done that was positive? I can't think of anything. I remember when he gave away, like, empty game boxes and he signed his name to the box. That was, like, his big philanthropy moment back in the day. All right, what is up, everybody? Darkside Phil here, and welcome to the Hardcore Gaming Season Giveaway of 2013. All right, the very first item I'm giving away is Deus Ex Human Revolution's Collector's Edition content. So let me show you what exactly that is. Okay, this is Deus Ex Human Revolution, Collector's Edition. Comes with this very nifty collector's box on the inside. Comes with a few things. First of all, Collector's Edition packaging. As you open that up, you're gonna see the game's gone because I traded it in years ago, but it does have the second bonus disc that probably has the behind the scenes content and stuff like that, okay? Yeah, how much would you like to have that autographed by me? Pretty cool, right? It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> On October 23rd, DSP had the big announcement for his followers. Let's talk big releases. Basically, uh, Darkseid Phil talks about how Moist Critical and other big YouTubers mention him all the time. Because we're all bottom feeders. Yeah, and it's funny because so many people on the internet know who I am, right? Let's be honest here. The biggest YouTubers out there, I mean, what's his, what's his name? Uh, Moist Critical literally a week or two ago references me in his video. Um, the biggest YouTubers out there who get millions of views a day know who I am and reference me regularly. And they all reference memes. But none of them ever want to actually give me a chance to do anything, right? It's just, oh, just laugh at Phil. That's it. It's all we want. Happy Thanksgiving! This right here is a prime example of how dark side Phil is nuts. Like, he's gone. He's far gone. Phil, what, 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 what? would they talk about about you besides memeing on you, bro? Like, what is there to your being? There's nothing here. You're a husk of a human. <laughs> dark freaking souls. Now, keep in mind, I want to clarify, it's not the game. The game I actually traded in several months ago. Mass Effect 3 Let me get this Collector's Edition, today. but the game is not in it. So to warn everyone, just to show you for full disclosure, no game. <laughs> However, you get this really- If you died in desert, vultures wouldn't even pick at your corpse, bro. <laughs> like, what could they do with you, Phil? What would they talk to you about? Your hottest moment was having a wank on YouTube. Like, what are they gonna do? But do you want Moist to have you on his show and talk about Evo in 94 when you became fourth place, you know? Are we gonna do the helicopter story again? Most of us know it backwards and forwards. <laughs> I, I used to work at a helicopter company, dude, and Donald Trump came in one time and he didn't pay promptly for his parts. That's like one of Phil's big stories. The only other thing anyone could ask him would be questions he doesn't want to answer, like where's Cat? <laughs> Phil, how the hell did you go bankrupt for 500 grand? These are questions people will want, but you never answer. So there's no fun to you. There's nothing anyone would take from this. 
It'd be a wasted time and energy. Even me doing this video, I know it's going to turn people off. For like the 10 people that want it, there's like 100 that are like the hell with Phil. Now this just in, police uh, officers in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, were asking people to be on the lookout for a man who robbed a store. And I think, yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. Okay, this is the guy there. Uh, they, wanted, they wanted people in Pennsylvania to be out on the lookout for. He's got, uh, well, he's got a nose and some hair that goes like that, and he was, uh, he was wearing a hat at the time of this particular, particular crime. He's got kind of a chin that comes down to a, almost a point. Stands about five feet four inches. The only person who's dedicated to trying to talk to Dark Side Phil is Review Tech USA. That's it. If Phil wants nothing to do with him. I mean, if I were to talk to him, he wouldn't, he wouldn't talk to me at all. People are like, DSP wants to do an interview. Why don't you? No, I'm not talking to Phil because Phil don't want to talk to me. I go, Phil, when you fought for bankruptcy, why would you lie about having a cat? <laughs> like, what move was that? Oh, I got my timeline mixed up. I guess Moist Critical talked about DSP twice before. Meme is telling me that Moist Critical actually talked about DSP on October 30th. Hmm. Oh, well, that's life. That's what people say. So anyway, DSP thinking he could capitalize on this, kind of like how he tried to capitalize on the jerk-off session back in, what was it, 2016? I know this is a lot of DSP lore. But back when he had a wank, him and Machinima were taking down the videos that anyone posted of him doing it. And then Keemstar got a load of it and talked about it. And DSP tweeted at Keem back then that he was willing to talk about his mistake in session. Only when Phil thought he could gain from it was he willing to acknowledge it and say that it happened and do an interview on it. But oh, how the tables have turned. DSP now hates this shit out of Keem. And then there's DSP. DSP has been bagging the 200 people that show up to his stream to pay all of his bills. Instead of getting a job, he goes to the stream and says, hey guys, my taxes are up. Hey, I gotta pay my gardener. Hey guys, and then he'll blow the little money he gets from his fans on like skins in a video game. I think DSP hates Keem more than he hates me. So thanks, Keem. <laughs> After Moist Critical did his uh, video where he talked about Boogie2988 going broke and DSP being on the decline, Darkseid Phil snapped into action. My God, he was like a pig with truffles, sniffing out those possible donations buried under the ground of content. DSP tweeted this. Saw what Moist Critical said about me on stream today. I personally like the guy and his content. If you flash forward, I'll probably put in a clip here where DSP admits he doesn't really watch Moist Critical, but let's just play along for now. A show, or I guess he does live streams. I don't know. I don't watch all of his content. I just, every once in a while, I see a random video of his in my feed. I watch them. I think that they're entertaining. Lies! Lies! You are the prince of lies! And I will address it on stream tomorrow. He's not wrong, but it's very obvious he only watches the negative <laughs> about me. And that's the entire point of why I've asked to be interviewed. People would interview Darkseid Phil tomorrow if Darkseid Phil had like a complete expose. But Darkseid Phil has more criteria to interview him than Michael Jackson had for Barb and Walters, bro. And DSP didn't write Man in the Mirror. <laughs> but with the way he acts, you think he did. <laughs> I have, I tried so hard to get an interview with DSP. I tried so hard. I just, I love him. Like, I don't hate you know, him. I'm not a detractor. You got an interview with Kyle Rittenhouse coming up, and you couldn't get one with DSP? I almost had him. I almost had him. And then he he backed out, and he he's like, well, you know, I got I to gotta do my stream. I got to make uh, X amount of dollars. And I was like, I was so close saying I'll pay you. So close. So close. I'm still thinking oh. about it. I would hey. almost pay to do a DSP. Stream. I love you, chat. I love you guys. DSP's follow up tweet. When I regularly got the biggest YouTubers saying negative stuff about me based on the trending detractor vids, it's hard to keep this going. I hope Moist will listen. I know he will. He's reasonable. And I can clear the air a bit. We shall see. That Moist Critical was going to want to interview me? No. <laughs> They're quite the opposite. Right? Quite the opposite. I didn't think at all that he would be interested.
I hope Moist will listen. I know he will. He's reasonable. Oh, my God. Bill, Moist Critical doesn't give a rat's ass about you, bro. You're like a dumpy chick on Tinder trying to hook up with a dude who's got something going on. Dark, Dark sea. On November 1st of 2022, DSP's Level 1 Podcast. A little backstory on the Level 1 Podcast. Dude, this is the pre-screen podcast, all right? But Keemstar came in, offered DSP a job, right? To do a podcast with Boogie2988 and Wings of Redemption. I don't know what it would have been called, but it might have been interesting for an episode or two. Keem offered Daddy Phil 50 grand. Phil turned up his nose about it, went on a rant about Keem. Keem then roasted Phil and said DSP is still on level one. Thus, DSP, being the absolute master tactician, changed his pre-stream podcast to the level one podcast. This dude, minimum effort, maximum results. That's how Dark Side Phil will be remembered. Say, but we're talking ginormous YouTubers, uh, streamers, even you know channels that are supposed to be reputable journalism, which it's obvious they're not when all they do is regurgitate detractor memes about me without vetting any information. Um, I want to just interject in here about the vetting of information. Phil, how can anyone be a reputable journalist? Invent information if you never have a comment. <laughs> if you reach Dark Side Phil to try and figure out what the hell's actually going on, he won't tell you a damn thing. Or he'll sit there and call you toxic. He'll block you. Oh my God. These detractors, they're stupid memes. Phil, is it true that Cat has left you and hanging out in Ottawa, Georgia or something? He won't reply. If you contact Darkseid Phil and ask him about his sister-in-law, Brazy Mama, in the wild, you said about him and Cat, he won't say nothing. Phil, I like your comment about Brazy Mama threatening your life. You won't get a reply. I will murder him. I will murder him. I will. I have his address. I will murder him. Oh my. <laughs> Then if you talk about it, you're the scumbag because you didn't do your due diligence. <laughs> I'm sorry. Due diligence is one of DSP's favorite phrases. My tax attorney from Connecticut did due diligence and did research. I, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, And it's exactly what I was talking about a week ago when I said I want a chance to go public and have a public interview with someone, you know, like that. So that basically I can clear the air about all the misconceptions about me. So at least my side of the story is out there. And hey, if DSP wants to give his side of the story, why does he just actually he gives his side of every story every day on the pre-stream podcast, but it's the same subjects over and over and over again. On top of that, remember, didn't DSP already do a debunk stream back when the pro Jared thing was going on? Remember? And on top of that, let's be real. Phil roasting pro Jared for like cheating or whatever. Didn't his woman leave Subaru Man for him? Y you can't throw stones in a glass house, Phil. <laughs> After DSP's sad attempt at getting Daddy Critical to pay him a little attention and take him down to Moisty Myers, Review Tech USA chimed in on Twitter because Review Tech has been trying to interview Dark Side Phil for the better part of a century. The message I love to Phil while I was taking a dump. Enjoy. Hey, Phil. Um... I, I don't see this is the thing that's amazing about you, dude. I said, I'll turn off the chat. Do you have no, you don't have to worry about the tractors asking you anything or I'll put it in members only mode because I won't even say that I'll put it in members only mode. Um, so like your detractors don't become members. I'll get to you. Or I'll just turn off the off monetization for you. So I, I don't make any but... money from the video would you like would you like me to donate to a charity phil <laughs> yeah he said i brought up none of his points i brought up everything you don't it's not for clout then just dude come on okay so i forgot one not only did richer of utech usa throw in his hat to interview dark side phil mr medica stepped in much to phil's chagrin you're out there you're throwing the line you're like moist moist receive my messages please let me on your stream and interview me, sire. And instead you get Mr. Medica, the cancer man. 
The Cancer Man can. One, one quick little thing. One quick little thing. DSP related news. Now I know you think, oh God, am I going to talk about his car dealership thing where he got suckered into paying like $8,000 for spark plugs because he doesn't know how machines operate? No. The best part of this clip is how Mr. Bedeker brings up the other Dark Side Phil saga that was going on. The car saga. All right, I'm going to try and make this so short because I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't give a rat's ass. And that's the problem with doing Dark Side Phil videos. There's so many layers. He's like a painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Just when you think you figured out how he painted the Mona Lisa, there's another layer. But it's always layers of stupidity. The car dies, it sounds like it's a battery issue. Instead of like checking the battery and getting a new one, which means that him and Cat would have to horror of horrors use public transportation. He pays to take it to like Midas, Jiffy Lube, or one Firestone or something. And they check out his car and they proceed to fleece the hell out of Dark Side Phil, bro. To replace DSP's battery, it was $230, dude. They didn't even give him a top of the line battery. I mean, the battery itself was $195 plus tax, $5 Washington fee, the $22 battery core. Aren't they supposed to? $15 removal and replacement? They didn't even give Dark Side Phil. Like a rebate. When you bring in an old battery, you get money back. They didn't even do that. They gave him a diagnostic service. Obviously, you plug in the car to the computer. You look at some beeps and squeaks and you rip off a douche. Can I say douchebag? I don't even know on YouTube anymore. The coup de gras. $541 to replace his spark plugs. Phil, you could have got a spark plug gauge and did this yourself for a fraction of the cost. But then that will require you. To leave that home office. I understand. I understand his garage bill got leaked. And everybody found out that DSP doesn't understand how automobiles work. And then went in on a bag thought But what I want to talk about. Is DSP has put a video out. Asking people. To come interview him. DSP. <clears throat> oh my god. Oh, cancer man. DSP is out there. Asking for a sit-down interview with anybody that's interested. Even said he's open to having them email him. And chat, what I'm thinking is, there's nobody better for this job than me. But I'm going to need your help. <laughs> I'm going to need your help, chat. Because DSP, he's not my biggest fan. Now, I, I used to make fun of him on Brightside Bob. Did streams making fun of him. And they're still funny to me. But I did do a catfishing video where I exonerated him by showing it was complete bull**** So that should kind of like, that should equal out. But I want to interview DSP. I have so many burning questions for him. About Sons of Kojima. About just everything that's gone on. He wants a fair interview. I am all for that shit, DSP. I will give you a fair interview. I'll ask the hard questions, but they'll be fair. Tomorrow. I just happened to jump on YouTube and search for the guy. And all I could find in regards to him and me was the most toxic shit I've ever seen. This guy as far back as eight years ago. Yes, as far back as when I moved across the country from Connecticut to Washington was making toxic ass t content about me. Benefiting from slandering me, uh, you know, saying really nasty things about myself and, and, and other people who I associate with. Um, basically a scumbag. I know nothing about this guy's personal situation at all. All I'm judging on is based on what I saw with a five minute search on YouTube and what I saw was some of the most toxic, worthless content I've ever seen in my life. I can't believe that anyone would watch that kind of shit. And again, that's the vast majority of shit. A lot of popular stuff on YouTube. This is funny. He's gay. A quick segment and every once in a while, um, he does bring me up. Usually he brings me up in a meme. Like he'll reference my accident in 2016 and he'll have a good laugh about it and say things like, you know, no one, no one is like Dark Side Phil. You name another person that could have something like that happen on a stream and then immediately go into his normal stream and act like nothing happened. Anyone else would be like insanely embarrassed and they would, you know, disappear from the internet. I love how DSP talks about the moist critical clip and he just adds extra stuff into it to make it seem better than it was it's like he didn't say that phil phil what are you doing this is like when he won evo in 94 
And instead of just going, yeah, fourth place, whatever, he goes, best American Street Fighter player in the year of 1994. Justin, did you, did you have any more honorable, uh, dishonorable mentions? Um, hmm. I guess I would agree with you with DSP. Yeah, my like, boy. Because what DSP does, uh, like, in person, he's all nice to me and shit. And, per and, then, and then when he makes a YouTube video, he, he thinks he's all hard and crap. Uh-huh. I think, I think, like, Jaha and, like, Boss were, like, looking for him if he ever came down to one of the Evo events or something. Yeah, so, like, he was, like, I heard he was, like, crying and everything. So that was pretty, <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> By my detractors in particular. And now we've got big channels like Moist Critical who reiterate those negative misconceptions and or take moments out of context as like, this is all who Phil is. And now everyone who watches his content believes that. And that's not fair. I don't even know if I could force people to sit through this because like DSP just says a whole lot of nothing and it takes forever to do it. That's why most people watch this dude to double speed. I don't know how he thinks anyone can give him any more or like paint him in a better light. Like DSP, bro, you got into YouTube at the ground floor. You were lazy as could be. Instead of changing with the times and keeping your finger on the cultural zeitgeist, you decided to tell everyone to eat a bag of dicks and you're going to do what you wanted. And you fell off. And you proceeded to keep falling. Just when we think you hit the bottom, you know, you just tear through the core of the earth. <laughs> you know, it's like, what could anyone do with you? It's like, so Phil, you had a day off. What happened? Snort. Me and my wife went out. We ordered food from DoorDash. We got our errands done. Boring. He's like, you got to spice up Phil. It literally takes a skill to take DSP's videos and make them remotely mentally digestible. You just sort of phase out. That's what they call it, pignosis. He just, yeah, 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 yeah. Until like you just sort of accept whatever's going on. And you become a vegetable. <laughs> and he's like, guys, I need some help. There's not enough tips in the stream and you open your wallet. Oh, if DSP was any fun, he would let Mr. Medicare interview him. Now that would actually be something people would tune in for, but DSP will never go for it. He'd rather try to get Moist Critical to interview him. Someone who doesn't know who he is. So that way you, you can't grill him half to death about all of the things he's doing. Phil. Why'd you pay $500 for spark plugs, Phil? You ever heard of a spark plug gauge, Phil? You ever worked on a car, Phil? Where's your wife, Phil? What did you do with all that money you made and somehow ended up in debt for 500 grand? Oh, remember that time when DSP was like trying to get money out of his fan base, telling him that like his family member, like his mother and father, they're like close to death and he's going to go to Connecticut to see him because he might not see him again because he's so old and frail. He has to do this now, you guys. And then people in chat were like, if you go over to Connecticut, Phil, you should marry Cat. And DSP's like, I have money to do it. I don't 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 have money to do it. Then he goes to Connecticut and marries Cat. But the misconception is I'm banned from Twitch because that's what my haters say. So I'm not shocked to hear that Moist Critical thinks I was banned from Twitch. It's not his fault. That's just believing what idiots say about me. That's not true. DSP, Moist Critical doesn't know anything about you and doesn't care. You got banned from the Twitch partner membership. So if Moist Critical hears he's banned from Twitch, it's not like Moist is going to turn into an investigative journalist to figure out what exactly you got cream for. If you can, Super Chat, please become a member. Please buy my merch. Here's my t-shirts, right? He was shilling to his audience. He could do that. That's fine. But what Moist Critical was making a, a point of is he goes, here's a YouTuber who used to have four, well, used to have five million active subs. Now he has four million. And he's literally be like begging people on his stream for money. He's like, it's not a good look. I agree. But if what Boogie's saying is true, I understand why he's doing it. Okay? I can see both sides. A year ago, Boogie put out a video entitled finally i'm rich back when crypto was making crazy dot like what was it 60 grand a coin or something the second you see a downward trend it's time to jump here we are a year later and boogie has the help me video frankly like i don't even know what to make of it i don't know if i'd have the guts to do that to be like hey guys guess who's rich 
and then I screw up, lose all my money. <laughs> Put out a video like, hey guys, guess who's dead broke? Subscribe, join my OnlyFans, join my memberships, buy my merch, lick my ass, play with my nips. Only you can keep me from working. And of course, DSP sitting here, and he's like, I can see both sides. I see why he's doing it. Of course you do, Phil. You've been begging like this for years. Boogie needs to pay you for mentorship. Take some lessons. Dark side Phil, how to beg successfully and hang around long past your prime. Only 1995. What do you think of Dark Side Phil? Because he's infamous for being an e-beggar, right? So basically that's when Moist Critical goes, well, yeah, I'm up on Phil. I I I I Basically, the way he says it, you can tell that, like, he's interested in me as a character, but he doesn't watch my content, all right? You can tell he's not sitting here right now watching my stream. He's watching the detractor highlight of my stream that picks in at the bad parts and says that's all that I am, all right? This is why I keep saying that DSP is either a character or he's Stone Cold Crazy. He's like, you can tell Moist Critical doesn't watch my content because your content is so boring. Jesus Christ! DSP streams are like ambient. Nothing's going on. Nothing interesting happens. You pray to Christ something upsets him. Because that's the only time he has something to say. I've watched his Street Fighter stream of Street Fighter 6. Oh my God. It is a waste of your life. Tevin's getting drunk. You literally have to have a buzz on to be able to sit through a fell stream. It's weak sauce. Of course, he's not watching. You suck. Oh my God, dude. You torment your fan base. Could you imagine watching something boring and then someone demanding money? DSP's like a stripper you don't want to see at the club. And then they get off the stage and walk up to you and ask for money. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, you should pay me for being here. DSP streams are so boring. This dude falls asleep on his own live stream. Hmm. I love her lack of energy. Go, girl, give us nothing. nothing. Ah! <laughs> was I upset that night? I absolutely, positively was upset. The game pissed me the off. It made me feel like <laughs> because the game was badly designed and it, it, it ruined an experience for me because I was liking the game up to that point and I was actually sad that the game had gotten so bad at that point. In addition, I already had a week where things were already really like bad for me financially both behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. You know, it was a slow week that week. And I didn't even know what was going to happen being able to afford stuff. And I was honest with my audience that night. And some people just can't take that honestly. Basically, it amounted to nothing. Um, no one's really supported, which pisses me off. It does. That and it's purely budgetary. It's not personal. Ah, I'm going to kill myself. Wow. I'm going to kill myself and it's your fault. Trying to play this off as he was really hard up for money this time. Like, for real, dude, it's kind of disgusting. Because he's always hard up for money. He's been hard up for money for years. He's begging for money since he, like, came and hit the scene. He's telling people to click the links in the video, click the ads, send money to his PayPal. This is the same thing. He's 14 years, Phil. He's hoping he got Moist Critical sees this and thinks, like, DSP's making some sort of Barbara Walters level turnaround. I don't even know who that is. Dark Side Phil admitted that the month we're talking about, because this was last month, was so good on YouTube. A lot of people came out and supported him and stuff. And he made so much money from gifted memberships that he could buy his wife an Xbox S. Now, this whole time right here, DSP is telling us he's broke. But if you watch Phil, even like passingly, like a retarded squirrel that's outside your house. You sometimes see, you're like, what the hell squirrely doing now? He will tell on himself. Last month, he was hard for money. At that point. In addition, I already had a week where things were already really, like, bad for me. Financially, both behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. You know, it was a slow week that week. And I didn't even know what was going to happen being able to afford stuff. This month, last month, he made a lot of money. Things were good. He could buy an Xbox. Uh... During that time when they were very, when they were, well, I mean, they still are cheap. The thing was, they went on sale during the Black Friday week. And thankfully, thanks to, to having a really good month here on YouTube two months ago. If you remember, there was the month when I got the ridiculous amount of gifted subs. So because of that, I had some extra money. 
and I was able to get her an Xbox Series S. Horseshit! See how this dude rolls? We ain't even getting into the, the television saga. Not even. Keep the clip going before I stab myself in the head. Like, Phil has the pignosis. He Dark mind sea. and brainwashes his viewers Death into contributing. Hell. The pignosis is very real. I call it begnosis. Like, the dude constantly, there's always something wrong. There's always something bad on the horizon. He's the underdog. You gotta help. And his fan base always rallies to him. All right, even back in the days of Twitch, you could find this in a Snort Brunel video. Twitch streamers have the most generous fans. We looked at the revenue each streamer gains from bits and cheers per subscriber. This shows which streamers have the most loyal fans. Users with the most donations incoming per subscriber include Dark Side Phil, Tim Ack, what is that, Tim the Tap Man, and Castro. DSP's number one. This was in 2020. Oh my God, I'm so dizzy. Oh my God, I'm gonna vomit. <laughs> oh my God. So the pignosis is very real, that's the point. Like if DSP squeals loud enough, his fans come rushing in and throwing money like Scrooge McDuck, suffering from a brain aneurysm. Guys, playing a game that obviously is painfully badly designed, right? And I would hope that the fact that you guys are getting entertainment out of it, because you obviously were. Look at the, the view skyrocketed. People were really saying they were enjoying seeing me suffer through this. That at least someone would have said, all right, thanks a lot for that. We know you're having a rough week. Here you go. We'll contribute or do something to help you out. And at least then I'll be like, wow, well, at least it was kind of worth it for me suffering through this. Piece and it didn't happen. And I got upset about it. All right. I'm a human. I have weakness. I was having a bad time with the game. I felt so bad and I stayed an hour over. It's not a real, like, bro, you're acting like you're a bricklayer, dude. You're acting like you're a garbage man or a security guard. I had to do an hour overtime. Phil, you're at your house. You did that extra hour praying to God someone send you $50. You know, you wouldn't have to beg if you just try. If you actually put some goddamn effort into what you were doing. My God. You are the laziest content creator running. Stream. Yes, this is the quality content coming from Phil. Yeah, we're only two days into 2023, and I'm already suspecting that Phil is losing it a little bit. I know he thinks his fans will watch anything, but this is really low brow. Look at his background, bro. His background is empty PlayStation 5 boxes and Xbox boxes with little tchotchkes and bobbleheads. This is him leveling up. The magic eight ball. You give him eight dollars, you shake it around, you can ask the eight ball a question. Why don't you cut out the damn middle man and buy yourself an eight ball and ask it whenever you feel. It's a one time fee. Okay, celebratory bubble blow everybody. Jasper, here it comes. Bubbles. He really is falling apart under the weight of this massive talent. <laughs> How did that look? Oh, we get 100 likes. I'm going to blow bubble. What the hell are you doing? 40 years old. You can tell he comes from the mean streets of Greenwich, Connecticut. Because this wouldn't fly in this city. Me. I'm the complete polar opposite of that, you know? And that night, I was very honest with my audience. I, I basically said... I'm upset because I stayed late for you guys playing a game that obviously is painfully badly designed, right? And I would hope that the fact that you guys are getting entertainment out of it, because you obviously were. Look at the, the view skyrocketed. People were really saying they were enjoying seeing me suffer through this. That at least someone would have said, all right, thanks a lot for that. See what I'm saying about DSP being crazy? Like, bro, you staying an extra hour to play a game you don't like is not doing anything for anyone, really. They're there to laugh at you. You may as well have fun. Notice how other streamers that are rich are having fun. What is a kid's name? Speed of Sonic or something? He looks like he's always having fun. People just throw money at him. Dark Side Phil is always in a constant state of peril. <laughs> and he expects to be paid for it. He plays a game he doesn't like. And he literally says... You think someone would thank me by going, Here, Phil, you've been suffering through the game for my entertainment. Here's some money. Phil, I know you had a rough week. You got fleeced out of $500 spark plugs. Let me alleviate your stress. Absolutely right. I 100% will publicly admit that was a, a, one of the times 
when the weakness of me as a person was exposed to the internet. For sure, one million percent. That was a moment that I was weak because I was very upset about how things were going financially for me that week. Um, and because I was so upset at the game, I vented to my audience and you could say, that was bad. So this was your one moment of weakness. I guess the other 14 years of seeing you do this is a fever dream we all suffered. And all the videos that have proof of you doing the same thing repeatedly, they're all doctored. They're all deep fakes. If you look back at my content from 10 years ago, when I was very popular on YouTube and I was rolling in the ad revenue, I never mentioned money. Channel, which is this channel, The King of Hate HD, and basically how much you guys participate with this channel, if you know what I mean. Uh, I'm not allowed to come out and just say, uh, you know, how you can do that, but anyone who's accustomed to YouTube and how the partner channels work, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. I was never asking for it. I never, I didn't have a PayPal where you could donate. I didn't even, I, I just started a Patreon. I had been a YouTuber from bulls Quack. artist. I say again, bulls Quack. artist. DSP's lying through his goddamn teeth. <laughs> You, you, Phil, Phil, are you doing this? Are you really sitting there going, I never had a PayPal, I never asked for money. Lies, lies. Bro, there's literally video of you telling people to send you money for PayPal. When you had a Patreon, you told people to join your Patreon and you didn't want to be Mr. Views, that Patreon would set you free from views. Why did I, why? Why did I do this? Box to play Fortnite today. You can take me to Moisty Meyer, but not Loot Lake. I really love to chug chug with you. But this is very much my business, <clears throat> all right? I do have to treat it like a business. Because if I have a day where everything's very slow, and I don't mention, by the way, things are kind of slow today. I would appreciate it if someone could contribute and it would pick up. It would be great, okay? If I don't do that, and I have a series of slow days, I could actually be screwed. Remember when like DSP was uh, in trouble for his taxes with the IRS and he got on the stream every day and told us that it wasn't a business? Uh, whatever you want to call this, because technically it's not a business. I know lots of other things too, because I, I've been calling out that this thing is not a business, because it's not, it's not a legally registered business. All the work that I put into this, this, this entity, this, it's not a business. It's because it's not. I don't own a business. I don't legally own a business anywhere. He doesn't know what it is, but it's definitely not a business. Now we're back to being a business again. Now, do I want to operate like this forever? No, I don't. I don't like this. I hate this. I freaking hate this. I don't want to have to constantly be asking for contributions and asking for help. I hate it. Really, it hurts me to do it to my audience. I detest it. I don't want to do it, but I have to. If I want to continue to do what I love, and if I want to do what people tell me is meaningful. Gulag kills don't count. Yeah, bye. Goodbye. Don't come back. Dishonest ass Quack. don't stay in my chat. Sorry. Gulag kills don't count. They're the same as any other kill. I need to do what I love. And if I want to do what people tell me is meaningful. Okay. <clears throat> so toxic. Oh, you think that was toxic? To want people to be people of their word? Now you're gone too. Since, you know, you think it's toxic to make people actually live up to what they say they're going to do. Come on. The fact Phil says he loves this, that's a lie. The only time Phil says a stream is good is if he gets a certain amount of money. If he's in that vest, if he's wearing a stupid hat and glasses, it was a good stream. If the stream doesn't make a certain amount of money, it was a slow day. Notice how that's always what it is. Also, if you look at DSP's Twitter page, it's like a totally different person. He does run his Twitter like a business like a PR firm that has nothing but positive things to say. Find out more on DSP Gaming while we make it to the other side of this bridge. Like, then you go on the stream, the dude looks miserable, and he's hinting at money. I need to do what I love, and if I want to do what people tell me is meaningful. Very nice. Nothing you've done is meaningful. I'm not trying to be mean to you, but I'm being real. Even what I'm doing, people sit there and go, you got me through a dark time. I don't let that go to my head. I was making doofy videos to make a couple people laugh and I went on about my business. That's the difference between me and Phil. I look at what I'm doing, I'm like, ah, whatever, it's Tuesday. Phil's like, I'm helping people, snort. My long-term plan 
is that within a few years, my credit builds back up because my bankruptcy will be in the past. I'll be able to do things like apply for loans or refinance my home, um, and that's going to save me. No, God, please, no, 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 no. No, Phil, credit is not for you, dude. You literally went 500 grand into debt. And now he's talking like, oh, when my credit gets back up and the bankruptcy's over, I can apply for loans. But that's how you got into this mess the first time. Applying for loans on a failing business that you call DSP Gaming. And I talk to people and I'm applying, or I apply for a loan or I do anything and they say, what do you do for a living? And I tell them I make, you know, gameplay videos and I'm a YouTuber. 2016, I lost big money that normally I would have coming in just from people naturally searching for a game on YouTube. Oh, a raw playthrough, let's check it out and they'd come watch. I got none of that and it really concretely hurt me really, really badly, all right? To the point, and I won't go too much into detail, but to the point where... I had to take out loans, I had to rack up credit cards, I had to do a lot of things that I did not want to do because I already was in debt from moving across the country in mid-2014, and my debt went way up. He's literally going to do it again if he gets his credit back. See? DSP doesn't learn. DSP's worst enemy, the greatest detractor of all time in Phil history, is dark side Phil. Oh my God. You hear me? You quote me on that. You heard that? Past dark side Phil. Screws. Quack. Present dark side Phil. Present dark side Phil. Screws. Future dark side Phil. <laughs> this dude is literally planning to take out loans. They're going to save me. The bankruptcy was supposed to save you, Phil. It didn't. Getting the money for your taxes was supposed to save you, Phil. It didn't. It's a never-ending loop. Dark Side Phil's streams are the equivalent of Star Citizen. No amount of money will ever be enough. And you're a damn fool to give any more if you've seen the grift. And I'm not trying to be mean to it, but god damn. You lucky. Moist doesn't know half of what I know about you. You lucky Moist doesn't want to speak to me. I might talk to Mudahar. Mudahar and I talk once in a while. I might, but then Mudahar probably knows as much as I do. Nobody wants to deal with you. You a goddamn snare. Rolling in dumb. Like, geez, dude. Maybe, the, maybe, maybe when you start making entire posts and entire videos that are product placements, maybe it's time to reassess your future as, as a person, as a business person, and say, what the f am I doing with my life that I'm such a sellout? Cause it really disturbs me. The DSP's like, oh, these shells and the title shells and the knife shells. And you know, I don't do that. I don't shill to my audience, but these people need to reevaluate what they're doing. And it's like, this dude is counting everybody else's bag. Everyone else. If you made $10 today and Phil made five, he hates your guts. <laughs> Remember that Dave Chappelle's bit, the player haters ball? DSP is literally all those dudes rolling to one. Brother got a nice car, man. Why you got a car, man? I only got one car. Why you got Why you got three cars or a wife or all that, man? That, man, that's played out, man. I hate on it till he's totally broke and ain't got nothing like me. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, yeah, that's what real hating is all about, man. <laughs> Part nine. I mean, I could pack it up. I could give up, right? What am I gonna give up? Quit on everything I've done for 14 years that everyone tells me daily is meaningful and they, they would be crushed if I stopped doing it. I gotta play that one again. DSP is playing himself off like he's Rocky Balboa, dude. Who the f*** are these people? That would be crushed if DSP stopped uploading his garbage. Probably Snort Burnell. <laughs> It just, it bothers me when I see someone like Moist Critical, who's like a genuine guy, who looks like a fun guy, makes great content. You can tell he's watching only the negative stuff about me, and that's his conception of me now. You know, this is why a week ago, I, now I'm pink. This is why a week ago, I said, I want to have a public interview out there so that all this stuff that's said about me can be addressed and aired out, and you can hear my side of the story. Because right now, no one hears my side of the story. All they hear or they they read the or they watch the detractor videos, right? They watch the nasty here, watch the scorn highlight. 
watch this moment where Phil had a meltdown on stream. Here we go with that interview him thing again. Nobody knows his side of the story. We've already heard your side of the story countless times. He just wants to be on someone like Moist's channel that has millions of subscribers. And he prays to God that this would somehow resonate with people. Because Dark Side Phil, like I said, he's crazy. This dude thinks if he got his fair shake someplace else, he would reach a whole new audience of people. He would get new fans and they would come in and they would see that he was the realest one on YouTube ever. The man who never shills, unless it's like peanuts they were selling in the early 2000s of the beanbag chairs or um, those Chinese gamer seats he was shilling. That the company was so, oh my God. Watch Almighty Tevin's video on that. Actually, that Moist Critical said about me, that actually is pretty hurtful, but I don't think he means it that way. He basically said, I still say to this day, the best thing that Phil ever left on the internet was when he had his accident, but the rest, he just kept streaming as if nothing happened. And, it, you know, basically it's hilarious because it shows incredible determination, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Here we go again. DSP talk about the same crap. But then putting words in Moist Critical's mouth. <laughs> like, the white DSP so... Like, okay, okay, forget it. This video, it's garbage. God bless you if you made it this far. The way DSP saw Moist Critical's video was like through DSP vision. <laughs> Moist was like... He did say it was like a gangster move or whatever. But DSP saw it as like Moist Critical said I had incredible determination to keep streaming after jerking off. Like he's the hero of a shonen manga. <laughs> he's Naruto of spanking it. Things that can be said about me, both positive and negative. And although you can admit, yes, the embarrassing moment was definitely one of the things everyone reminds or remembers about me. I don't really think that was the defining characteristic of who I am on the internet. DSP just can't accept the fact that his greatest moment on internet history was having a wank. Like, lean into the meme, dude. I think Review Tech USA said this, and he was right. You should have capitalized on that. You should have sold t-shirts. You should have ran with it. You probably would have actually made some money. And you were a sport about it. You could have probably pivoted your declining career right there. But instead, you tried to bury it. You had people's videos taken down. You were a dick about it. And still, that's all anyone remembered you for. Hell, I'm sure most people remember me for the pokey drama. Run with it. Instead of being upset like, I did a lot more than that. Yeah, it was me. She tried to bury me. <laughs> no. Was well recognized as one of the most popular Let's Players on YouTube who basically inspired so many others. People like the creatures, right? Who they in turn inspired more people and then inspired more people. DSP talking about him inspiring the creatures who inspired other people. He was the father of Let's Plays. DSP's acting like he's a pioneer. He's Davy Crockett of internet gaming. But in all actuality, if you look it up, Let's Plays existed before YouTube and before Darkside fell. They were on forums and whatnot. I'm pretty sure someone's done a video on it. I'm not looking. I'll be honest with you. Moist Critical, he's huge. He's giant. I'm shocked. The guy even spends a minute talking about me and his content. As you can tell, DSP is really trying to kiss Moist Critical's ass here. Because PewDiePie's talked about DSP. PewDiePie's talked about DSP at the height of his fame. Does the PD5 have 100 million subscribers? I don't think Moist does. But since Darkseid Fell hates PewDiePie and PewDiePie knows a bit about Darkseid Fell, we're just going to pretend like PewDiePie's never spoke about him. But Moist, my God, he's a star. He's the greatest ever. He's Jesus. Here's the difference. Moist Critical brings me up every once in a while in a funny way. Sometimes it's positive. Sometimes it's a joke laughing at me. Who cares? No big deal. He's not Mr. Metoker. He's not, oh, let's do a series of insanely hateful, destructive videos about Phil. That's that's the difference here. He's literally, Moist Critical benefits nothing by mentioning me in his content. He just does because he genuinely finds it interesting. That it, versus, I have a concerted effort to try to ruin someone's life, which is what Matoka did. Mr. Matoker was doing hateful things against me. I think Jim's whole thing is similar to my own where you just look at madness and you laugh at the absolute absurdity and you're an absurd character phil no one has anything to gain from you nobody did an interview with the quartering and it wasn't exactly like the 
barnstorm what you thought it was going to be. Even me doing this video. Realistically, this is dumb. Like if I talk to my consultant or advisor and I go, hey, I'm thinking of doing an hour long dark side fill video. He would go, oh, I see you like to lose money. <laughs> He's like, the time you waste editing this could have gone to a sponsor, could have gone to a subject people are interested in, like comic books and anime and manga, or stupid stuff on TikTok. Instead, you're talking about the jerk-off man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's funny. See? It's clown world. And he's like, it's clown shoes what you're doing with your career. This isn't good for me, Phil. It's good for nobody. But I'm doing it anyway because I'm a masochist. Darkside Phil finally stopped doing his horrible podcast to start the gaming, which then turned into another conversation about Moist Critical, who at this point you'd assume is his man crush, because my god, is he talking a lot about you? I've heard more about Moist Critical from Darkside Phil than I've heard about Cat from Darkside Phil, and he's married to that broad. Point being, he thanks Moist Critical for helping him see the error of his ways. This was the new Darkside Phil ago because I was pretty bad like I said when Moist Critical said that and I was like okay so let me walk, go back and watch and then I watched the scorn deal and I was like oh my god I was like disgusted with myself I really was I was like and it sucks because I mean obviously I did it for a reason I was acting like that for a reason like I was really scared but when someone who literally has nothing to gain from you says something like that about you you realize that it probably rings true better. I actually, I, I feel like I actually owe Moist Critical a thank you for calling me out like that because it made me realize that I was doing a very wrong thing and I needed to stop. This was the improved Dark Side Phil who was not going to beg and he was not going to. It doesn't matter. You already know he's going to start begging again. So basically, it looks like you guys have lost interest. Uh, I'm doing my best, you know, world three of five, I hope the final world is not a real world, it's just a narrative ending. Um, but the game is getting worse the further I play it, quite frankly it is. Um, and, yeah, if you, if you guys can see, attendance is lower, engagement is lower, support is lower, everything is lower. On the 15th of November, the official podcast with Moist Critical, they talk a little bit about Dark Side Phil and the possible interview that Phil was hoping for. I heard uh, Charlie, I think it was you were going to interview divorce. DSP, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I, I saw I saw that. That's just, I'm not doing that. So well, what? Uh, Do what? Apparently, he's like, he, he doesn't like, he doesn't get mad at you. He's blocked my ass because I've watched too many of those hate videos. But yeah. apparently you get the pass because, you know, it's like Moist Critical. He just looks up DSP Gaming and he just sees all the bad videos. I don't even blame him. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, so I was just talking about, so... To tie everything back, I was talking about Boogie and like the e-begging stuff, and then uh, I, I likened it to DSP, whose whole brand has become like you know making sure his viewers are giving him money or else yeah, like he saying makes... he has no time to do anything and he's so yeah, busy. It's very similar. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I compared the two. DSP saw it and he made like a response to it and then was requesting an interview. I don't can interview people. I was just talking on stream about the <laughs> like it's not that deep. <laughs> and there you have it. Moist Critical himself says it ain't that deep. There's a couple more video clips that I'm probably not going to hunt down of Darkseid Phil still talking about this, still angling. Oh, you know, uh, I might have an interview lined up, but nothing came of it. If anything, nobody really wanted this interview. And who he hoped would interview him felt it was not that deep. Because it wasn't. It was a passing conversation mentioned that, that Darkseid Phil took too much to heart. He even spent like a few weeks trying not to beg and telling people about how he wasn't begging. But then he would proceed to beg right after saying that. It was like a weird indirect beg. And I don't think I can find it. Well, I guess that's the end of the video because it stopped abruptly, which probably means I passed out while doing this at the time. This is taking me over a week to do. So I may as well thank the Patreons. I'd like to thank you if you made it this far for watching. Thank you subscribers, the YouTube members. Obviously, got to thank Memeology for uh, helping me source some of this garbage. 
Uh, thank you to the detractor community that also put it online. Uh, 